Justice Jackson? So, picking up where uh, Justice Barrett left off, you, you, you say that the ordinance here pertains to conduct and not to status, and I'm just trying to figure that out. Uh, I'm not so sure for this reason. It's because all humans engage in the act in question, sleeping. And yet, the statute operates, or the ordinance operates, to penalize only certain individuals, those who have no choice but to do that act in public. So it appears, I think, not to be the act that the state, or the city in this case, finds criminally culpable. Um, it's instead the act as engaged in by certain people, by people who cannot afford housing and have nowhere else to go. So why is that the wrong way to think about it? And if that is the right way to think about it, why isn't that a status crime in the way that Robinson contemplates? It's not, because we can look at the law and it has a conduct element. The conduct is establishing a place, a campsite. And that is something that a person who has a home but, or a shelter But you've just defined well. away the, the basic actus reus, right? The actus reus is sleeping outside, I guess, outside to the extent you put outside in it. But that's the problem I'm talking about. The actus reus is the sleeping. Right? Everybody, that's not a criminally culpable kind of activity. Um, that's what I think might distinguish it from Robinson and, and make it worse for you in a way. Because in Robinson, at least, to the extent someone had a disease, and the question was, well, are they engaging in otherwise criminally culpable conduct, buying and selling drugs, taking drugs, you know, we, we look at that kind of category of things. Here, the actus reus is sleeping. Human, universal. The, 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 the city adds, okay, but you can't sleep outside. And I guess what I'm trying to understand is to the extent that that only happens with respect to a certain category of people who have no other place to go, why isn't that really just punishing the status of being someone who doesn't have any place to go. It doesn't apply only to that, those people. The respondents here are trying to exempt a whole category of people. What, uh, so what you look at there is the, the conduct of camping under federal law and in this court's decision in Clark, it was understood that that is conduct. It is just like trespass, where if you are found in a place, if you enter with permission, but then you remain there without permission under quarrels. But it's not just like trespass, because presumably you have other places to go. So let me just, let me just ask you this other question. What, what is your understanding of the Martin rule? Um, because I, I thought it was premised on the circumstance in which someone had nowhere else to go and they needed to sleep and they needed to be there, but you seem to suggest that necessity is not sort of baked into what Martin was doing. Martin speaks in terms of someone who is involuntarily homeless, and that raises all of those policy questions that we've been discussing about but how But assume they exist. In involuntarily homeless means the person has nowhere else to sleep. Yes, that is. Uh, the necessity defense is available, and what respondents are asking to do is to constitutionalize that very defense under the Eighth Amendment. So, as I said earlier, it could be um, the argument could be made. It would be a very high bar under due process, but that is the sort of argument that we would expect one to make under a due process framework under this court's Kaler decision. Thank you, counsel.